Okay, in the last video, we talked about how to machine this infusion. And notice we have what this part here, which is called the top hat, which is where we held on to it. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to flip it over and how to machine this away. So we end up with a complete finished part. Stick around. It's going to be magical. Okay, so this is the objective. We're gonna use a different vise, a standard uh, machinist vise on the table, still in a mini mill. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first step is we're gonna go to new design and we're gonna save this and we're gonna call it FMM1 setup two and our last name. Okay, and I'm gonna save it obviously not here, but I'm gonna save it in um, the master of so then we're going to go back to our uh, the home and we're going to go into our tool library. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import that table that has that uh, milling vise in it. And that is number three from our selection. So I'm going to go ahead and hit right click, insert into current design, and it will come in. And once again, we want to make sure that the up and down here is in line with the Z up and down, which it is. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And then we are going to break the link. So hit break link and that will separate it, this file from our master file. Now in this one, you can see the raw stock is right here. If we expand this, we can click on stock and it'll show it. And that is not the correct size. Our part is now a different shape, but the raw stock at the beginning was two inches by one inch by three inches. So we're going to go ahead and put that same size stock in to our um, project. So, okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to change the stock to match what we started with. So we're going to modify and we're going to change parameters. And our depth is going to be two because the stock's depth is two. The width is three. And now the height was originally one, but we shaved off 20 thousandths when we made the first cut. So we're going to use 98, which would be the new height of the stock in the second setup. And then the height of the parallels are going to adjust how much we hold on to this in the vise. We want to hold on to it with more grip than what the half inch and a half parallels will allow. So we're going to go inch and a quarter. And then we go ahead and click OK, and you can see that we now have our raw stock being held in the vise. And the next step is to bring in our um, part. So we're going to navigate to where we've saved our part. Um, yours should be in your folder. Mine is down here. And here is part number one. So I'm going to right click and say insert into current design. There it is. Once again, I'm going to slide it briefly out of the way so that we have um ability to join it and then i'm gonna go j for join and i'm gonna pick the center now here's the tricky part the part now is at the very bottom and it's flush with the bottom surface so it's going to take a little bit of trickiness to kind of flip this over and we're going to find the center of the bottom and we are going to flip it now before we offset it twenty thousandths on setup number one on this case, when we put it in the vise, it's going to sit right on this finished surface. So this is the way we want it. And we can see while there's plenty of material to hold on to it in the vise, there's plenty of room to face all of this material away. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. Here's our project. And we can see that we now have the part inside of what was the stock in the vise. Technically, the jaws would be slightly smaller because they're going to squeeze against the actual part, not against the stock that isn't there. But we are only cutting above this surface, so this isn't uh, something we need to worry about. Next step, we're going to hop over into manufacturing and get the setup done. Okay, we're in manufacturing now, and we're going to go ahead and start with the setup. So we're going to go ahead and click on setup. Just like before, it brings in the whole thing. Our first step is picking the machine. So we go to machine. I'm going to choose from my library because we already have a machine. And I'm going to hit select. So now it thinks it's a mini mill, which is what we want. It's still milling. Our XYZ orientation is correct. This is the X-axis. This is the Y-axis. This is the Z-axis. 
but the location is not. And we're gonna have to move that after we do a couple more steps. So we're gonna go to model. Once again, the best way to pick that model in there is to open model here, open it again, and here is the model. So we're gonna select that. You notice that the green box got suddenly smaller and the X, Y orientation moved. The problem is on op twos, because we care about how thick the finished part is, because we care about how thick the finished part is, we want to actually put the origin at the bottom. Because the original stock, while we think this should be ideally 0 0.980 thousandths thick, it probably is not because the raw stock probably was not exactly one. It was some number close to one. So we're going to actually select the bottom of it and then cut from the top. That way it'll come out the exact thickness we want. So to do that, we have to move this from the top to the bottom. And the way to do that is I'm going to orient it around and I'm going to go to select a point. And then I am going to pick the center of the bottom. So now the origin will be at the very bottom. And when we set it up in the machine, we will tell it that the top of the parallels is the Z0 of the part. Now for the fixture, it's very similar to how we did before. We want to select everything but the stock and the part. So we're going to click on parallel one and the mini mill at the end, and it'll select them all, which is good. And then while we're here, we're going to go ahead and turn off the stock because we're not going to want it um, because it's going to get in the way of our manufacturing operations most likely. Just a good habit to have. We're going to go on to this. We're going to say, oh, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to turn on from solid and we can pick stock even though we've hidden it. We should have probably hidden it at this point. And then position, just like before, we are going to select, uh, select a point and we are going to select the corner of our vice tape of our table mini mill and the corner of the mini mill in our tool library. And then our last step is we have to give it a program number. This is 20112 uh, because this is the second setup in the setup. So two is for this class. The project is zero one. This is number one and then it's uh, number two. And then this is FMM one setup. If I can spell right, setup two in your last name. And then this work offset, because it's different from the previous ones, we are going to change this to 56. We used 55 last uh, project on the, op, on the setup number one. Now we're going to use 56 for setup number two. And go ahead and click OK. Most of that should have been repetitive. There was a little bit of difference in there, mainly with working with where the origin was. So our next step is to do the operations. We're going to go ahead and minimize this just to clarify our um, view here. And this only has one operation. We are going to remove all of this top hat material. So we end up with this. And we're going to do that only through facing. So we're going to go ahead and hit facing. And like we did in the previous uh, setup, we're going to select the facing tool. And from our tool library, it is this Mitsubishi 3-inch facing tool. We are cutting in aluminum and we are gonna hit select. Now in manufacturing, we could face this off very, very quickly, but I'm gonna teach you how to do multiple depths, which allows us to take multiple passes to face off all of this material. So if we go skipping the multi-axis tab because we don't use it, geometry, it already has selected the, the geometry. The only thing, heights we don't need to change, the only thing is passes. We cannot do it in one pass. We probably can, but we're learning how to do it in multiple passes. So we're gonna click on multiple depths and we are gonna change the maximum step down to what it is defaulted here, which is 60 thousands. So it's gonna take 60 thousands passes, one down, come down 60 thousands and shave it down until we get to our finish height. And we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And what you should see if you zoom in is four passes to remove that material, leaving us the stock behind. But you have to remember that on the first setup, we cut away all these corners and we would end up with our finished part. So the second setup is very efficient, very quick. Boom, we're done. Okay, now that we have this done, we could simulate it, but 
Um, this is a pretty straightforward operation, so I'm not gonna do that. Last step is to post process. We're gonna make sure that we're posting with this mini mill. We're making sure that use G0 is on. If we go down to the built-ins, we should change this to 450 if it didn't save. And then we're gonna copy this, control C, control V, and paste it as our file name so it's easier to read uh, on the screen. Lastly, I'm gonna output it to a known location. In this case, I'm gonna uh, go to the downloads and hit select folder and post. I'm gonna quickly click on this button so it'll open. Remember, you may get a window that says what to use to open it. I recommend Notepad because it's faster. But you can see here, we're using one tool. Our work offset is G56 and the program is rather short. Thanks for watching. This concludes the first of the series of lessons on how to use manufacturing infusion. In the next one, we're gonna highlight drilling. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.